worship. So good to see all of you here. You know, when I sing that song, I hope you're praying like I'm praying. Because that's a prayer song. Lord, build your kingdom here. Hey, they, hey that rhymes with something. Or remember, it rhymes with something. What do we say around here? We're what? Building God's kingdom one life at a time. I hope you pray that song like I pray that song. Set your church on fire, Jesus. Don't let us just be found a place in the pew. Send us out beyond the walls. Change the atmosphere, the attitude of our hearts in this room. Because Jesus prayed that too. You know what He said? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Build your kingdom here. Amen? Amen. Amen. Friends, welcome to worship this morning. It's so good to see all of you here. Some of you are guests with us this morning, visiting town with family. We're so good to see you. Some of you are just coming. Hey, I'm going to check this place out. Who are these people? What are they doing? What happens here on Sunday morning? We're really glad that you came. The scriptures say, you know, taste and see that the Lord is good. And I hope that each of us, whatever our background, wherever we've come from, wherever we've been in the last week, whatever trial that we've faced, whether we've succeeded or we've failed, that today we'll be able to taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen? Let's begin with prayer. Lord, send your Spirit upon us, we pray. That this time isn't just, Lord, you know, like going to the Lions Club. Send your Spirit upon us, we pray. But this time isn't just merely like attending a ball game. Send your Spirit upon us, we pray, Lord. But this time isn't just like clicking on the tube and being entertained. Send your Spirit upon us, we pray, and lift out of our hearts and from our lips glory and honor and praise to you, for you are worthy. Cause us not, Lord, to, to think we've come to get but change us so that we come to give, to give to you, and ultimately, Lord, to give to you our whole lives, our bodies, our whole lives, to be used for you. For you are the one who gave your life, and right down to your own body for us. We love you, Jesus, that you, rose, you died uh, for our sins, and you rose again on the third day. And we gather on Sunday, Lord, to remember that you rose again. We love you, and we lift our hearts to you, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Friends, stand, turn to a neighbor, welcome them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.
believe in the merchant birth. I believe in the saints' communion and in your holy church. I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in God our Father. I believe in
Friends, please be seated. Hey, there's a lot of great things that are happening right now in the life of the church. I'm so glad to share it with you this morning. Uh, before I begin, I want to make sure you see this connection card that's inside your worship bulletin. This is your opportunity. If you're new with this this morning, this is an opportunity to get connected. All right? This is a way to first get in connected in relationships with people, to get connected in with what God is doing. Uh, here through First Reformed Church. On the back side, you can get prayer, get a little more information. You know, we had somebody, we had uh, a little note there that we would need somebody to help take photography, and somebody said last week, hey, I'll do that, yeah. So if you want to sign up and be involved, uh, volunteer, get involved, and bring all of those. If you're a newcomer, bring it to the welcome table. It's right in the back. Well, Brenda, wave your hand. You won't see when, Brenda, right in the back is our welcome table, and you can bring those if you're a newcomer, and for newcomers, we have a gift there just to say thank you for being with us this morning. And all of us, if we have prayer or want to sign up for something, bring these to the back. If it's prayer, those go to me. If it's volunteering, those go to the right people, but make sure that you use all of those. Uh, today, we're going to do something really special for our offering. We're having two offerings this morning. Uh, the bags will be our regular offering. The plates will be our special offering for a sportsman's banquet. Some of you might be new to first, and this is a big outreach that we do every uh, fall, and we, we give to make this happen. And it's an outreach to, to sportsmen and uh, some women who do come, and it's an opportunity to reach people with the gospel. So we have the opportunity to participate in that uh, this morning as well. Uh, I'm very excited. In just a few moments, uh, we're going to have a little sharing uh, from our team from Victory Ranch. And they're going to share a little bit now, but after worship, there's going to be some coffee and some goodies. And they're going to share some more. And how you have the opportunity to ask them questions, to get a little more information. I'm excited about the possibility, well, not the possibility, the reality of sending more teams and the possibility of doing this more frequently. I'm excited to participate in what God is doing through Victory Ranch. But I don't want to steal their thunder. But we also have the opportunity to participate in something that God just kind of threw into our laps for this summer. Now listen. About a month ago, we had two young ladies up here, uh, Brittany Van Wyk and Caleb and Matron, who said, uh, we want to respond to the call of God to the mission field that's up at the lakes. We found out this, this week that there are 500 college-age students that come from overseas to the lakes to help just supply the labor force you know, for the whole summer. 500. 500. That's more than all of you combined right here. 500 come to the lakes. Some are from Jamaica. Some are from Eastern Europe. Some are coming from China. 500. And God really put this in our laps to partner with them. And you have an opportunity here to do something about that. What they found out, and, and they're going to share a little bit next week, just kind of a mid-summer uh, briefing. Uh, but they're finding out that there's a lot of these kids that are going hungry. Because they're saving up all their money and they're eating ramen noodles and popcorn, that kind of stuff. All right? You can make that happen for a little bit, but they're saving all their money. You have the opportunity to provide a home-cooked meal. So, what we need is a little bit of help. You can read a little more in your bulletin. But if you can make a couple of 9 by 9 casseroles of your favorite dish that we can give away, or excuse me, Brittany and Kayla can give away to some of these students, you can bless them. Or, here's the other big ask. Uh, they would love to have a, a fire pit, an above-ground fire pit, not on the ground, but above the ground, fire pit loaned to them for the summer. Maybe yours is just kind of sitting out back and you think, well, we're only going to use it maybe once or twice. Well, they want to create a gathering space when people come over. And if you have chairs, they would love to have about 12 chairs. You, know, you may not have 12, maybe you've only got two, and, but if somebody else has two and another person's got two. They'd love to have 12 chairs. If you could loan those for the summer, that would be a big help just to help propel the mission work that God is wanting to do in the lakes over the summer. You can participate in that. So please, um, please sign up. And just as a little reminder, tonight at 6 o'clock, uh, we're gathering over at the Christian Retirement Home if you'd like to be there for communion. Uh, and a lot of you also come along for that as well. So please take note of that. So I want to invite Megan, you want to come up and share from the, for Victory Ranch some of what God's been doing and what we can maybe continue to do and all that you can share now that you don't going to share later, go right ahead. So I have a few minutes to share. Um, so this is going to be more of a, this is what we did. This is why we should keep partnering with Victory Ranch. What is Victory Ranch? And then if you want to hear more of the fun stuff and see some more pictures, we're going to be out in the fellowship hall. So come talk to all our team members. Um, so I'm going to talk for a few minutes, then I'm going to, going to invite some of our team members up, and they're going to share a little bit about what impacted them. Um, 
So about three weeks ago, actually exactly three weeks ago, we sent a team to Victory Ranch, which is in Eastover, South Carolina, of 15 people. So this was us in the morning. Um, so Victory Ranch is a 17 and a half acre ranch in Eastover, South Carolina, run by missionaries Caleb and Chelsea Hinners. And their motto and the motto of Cadence International, which is the mission organization over um, Victory Ranch, is sharing our lives in the gospel with the military community. So I'll elaborate on that as we go. So this is kind of a map of, actually it's a satellite image of where they're at. So 1047 Richard Simmons Road, and then you can kind of see a lake. And then off to the left, there's some buildings. So that area all right there, that's the 17 and a half acres that Caleb and Chelsea run and that they invite um, men and women from the military to every weekend to share the gospel in their lives with them. Um, so here's some pictures. Going to kind of go quick again because um, we're going to share more out there. Just so you can kind of see a little bit of what we did. The four pictures on the left is kind of pictures of Victory Ranch. So you can see the lake in the upper left and then the lodge. So every morning we'd get up, um, we stayed in a guest house, and then we'd walk around the lake up to the lodge, and then that's where we would have breakfast, that's where the ministry would take place, and that's where Caleb and Chelsea live in the upstairs of the lodge, and then they do ministry on the main floor. Um, and then in the kitchen, um, there you see Diane and I think Caleb and then Jane are in the kitchen there. Um, and then on the right, that was the ministry room, so they have a bunch of tables and chairs, so on the weekends when the military come, um, that's where we eat and we all fellowship together. So day one, when we got there right away, um, before I talk about day one, I think the coolest thing about this trip for me, and I think um, even just talking to Pastor Paul, what he was really excited about too, is the neatest thing about this trip is that it was intergenerational. So we had five high school students, um, some people kind of Zach and I's age, and then um, older people as well. And so it's such a great mix of talents and skills. And I think those younger guys and gals just really learned a lot from being with the adults on the trip. And so for me, that was the most exciting part is just getting to see how the Lord just chose people to go on this trip. And then once we got there, it seemed like everybody had a role and a gift um, that they could contribute to the team. So day one, um, what we did when we were there is there was a guest house that Caleb and Chelsea have on the property. So um, it's kind of a guest house and a bunkhouse, kind of like two trailer homes put together, if that makes sense. And so we redid the guest house portion of it. And the purpose for having the guest house there is they not only live there, but then they also house sometimes um, wounded warriors. They have missionaries come stay with them temporarily. They want to start doing like marriage retreats, um, things like that. So this guest house kind of looks like, well, you can see there's like pink carpet and paneling and just really outdated. And so um, what he wanted us to do is come and renovate this guest house so that way it was more inviting, welcoming place, and then they could actually use it more often to house people. They want it to be full all the time. And specifically, there was a family coming this fall, and um, a friend of Caleb's, he just got out of the Air Force, and him and his wife were getting into Cadence as well. So they were going to be doing the same thing Caleb and Chelsea were. Um, so they're landing at Victory Ranch for like three months or so. So they were going to come live in this house. So it was really neat that we got to renovate it right before they got there. So that way it was ready to go for them. So day one was demo day. Um, we just ripped up all the carpet and the paneling. And before I could even get done with breakfast and down there, Arlen and Larry had crowbars in all the kids' hands and they were ripping stuff up. And it was awesome. Uh, here we go. Oh, I went backwards. Am I going backwards? We're going backwards. There we go. Okay, day two. So day two was just like a lot and a lot, a lot of painting. <laughs> there was a lot of painting and a lot of spackling. We kept making fun of Arlen because we'd paint the wall and then he would say it's not good enough so he'd have to spackle over it again then we'd have to paint it again and then he would spackle over it. And So I don't think he knows this but I think at one point we actually hid the spackling from him. Um, <laughs> but I don't think we ever told him but it all looked great. So every morning what we would do is we'd get up and we'd have devotions and breakfast and then um, we'd go to the house and work all day. Um, and then at night after we were done with dinner, we would get to play in the lake and I have a few pictures of that. Um, so that's kind of the pattern of the day. Why is it going backwards? There we go, day three. So day three, this was our final day of um, working. So that was a lot of just finishing the flooring, painting, and then we had like a, a furniture crew that kind of repurposed some furniture. So um, there on the left, there's like Arlen and a bunch of the boys finishing the flooring. They got to learn how to do flooring from him. And then um, on the bottom here is Maddie. Maddie Oster came with us, and I think she discovered a new um, love for repurposing furniture. So 
Um, she was kind of the head of that, and she sanded that table down and painted it and restained it, and it looked awesome, and she did a great job with that. That was kind of her project. And then in the upper right, um, I just wanted to mention this because it was so neat how um, Larry used to work for John Deere, and it just so happened that Caleb's backhoe, which needed a lot of work done, was a John Deere backhoe. And so one full day, Larry just spent his whole day working on this backhoe and fixing up all these little things on it. And that was such a huge blessing to Caleb. There's no way Caleb would know how to do that or have time to do it. So again, it was just neat to see how the Lord just plucked people out of here and plopped them at Victory Ranch just for what they needed. And then on the right, I um, have to make a special shout out to Diane because, yeah, none of us would have been able to work if we wouldn't have been filled up with all the good food that she made us. So a special thank you to Diane for all the hard work she did in the kitchen. She was like in full grandma mode. It was awesome. So three of these three kids, um, those are three of the five of Caleb and Chelsea's kids, and I have a picture of their family, um, their whole family later. But um, Diane was a huge, huge help. Chelsea is eight and a half months pregnant, and so she did not have the energy to bake and cook for all of us while we're there. So Diane was awesome in helping take care of the kids and cooking. Again, it was just really neat to see how the Lord um, just pulled people into their giftings. I don't know why it's jumping around. Okay, so here's just some of the photos of kind of like the flip. Um, master bedroom, the dining room, um, living room, kitchen area. You could see a huge change. So we kind of kept saying Chip and Joanna Gaines have nothing on us. Um, so again, here's just some of the pictures from the week. Diane was in the kitchen. Um, this photo here on the bottom left, I kind of, when I took this photo, I sent it to some people and kind of made a funny caption, like, how many Iowans can you fit on a backhoe? Um, but Larry's driving the backhoe and the boys all jumped on. But we did have fun too, in case you thought we only worked hard, we did play hard too. Um, so we got to swim every night and there's a lake and a dock and paddle boats and canoes. Um, and then we had fellowship time every night. So, um, what's going on? What's going on? Okay, the last day we were there before the retreat, um, we had a fun day and we went to Myrtle Beach. So we kind of went out to eat at this southern place called Mr. Bunkie's. Some of us got grits, some of us hate grits, Larry. <laughs> And then um, we went over to Myrtle Beach for the day and had a good time. Okay, I don't know what's going on. Do you know what's going on? I don't know what's going on. We'll just call it operator error. Do I need to point it at something? <laughs> okay, so this is kind of like the culmination of the week. So this is the heart of what Caleb and Chelsea do. It's on um, the weekends they bring in military from Shaw Air Force Base or Fort Jackson. We were part of a retreat that brought in um, female Army AIT ladies off of Fort Jackson, and we had six that day. That's the smallest retreat they'd ever had. Caleb didn't know, but they were in a cycle break, so um, one of the vans didn't show up because there was nobody to bring. So anyway, here's just some pictures for the day, um, and what happens is they bring, the, they bring them in, they kind of share with them what Victory Ranch is, what they do, and then they share the gospel with them, and then they get home-cooked meals all day. Um, and what's really amazing is, you know, we might think that's not that big a deal. I get home cooked meals every day. But um, this was the first time these ladies had had a day where they weren't getting yelled at, where they were in their civilian clothes. And it was just amazing to see them melt and just really um, feel overwhelmed by the love that they received just from a home cooked meal. Um, and then they share the gospel with them. And sometimes there's inquisitions and people get baptized and sometimes you don't know what happens and so we just continue to pray for them um, and I have I didn't bring it with me it's in my wallet but I have one of the cards that um, at the end of the day all the soldiers write down like what impacted them the most and any prayer requests and then we pray for the soldiers at the end of the day once they're gone and I still have one in my wallet and it was from a girl named Holly and Holly is from Iowa and um, so if you could just be praying for Holly I'm just gonna leave her name at that Peg had some really good conversations with her if you want to know more talk to Peg Jagger but Holly worships many gods. And so for her to go and just be surrounded by Christians and hear the gospel and hear that there's one God in one way and that Jesus Christ actually died for her on the cross and she doesn't have to worship a bunch of gods that can't hear and can't see is just incredible. So we just pray for Holly and pray that she would, yeah, come to worship the one true God. Uh, we really need to see your work. There you go. Yeah, cool. So 
again, thank you guys for supporting us and sending us. We could not have done this without financial support from you guys, prayer support from you guys. And then again, thank you to all of my team members who went. You guys are awesome. Thank you for going on this adventure, not really knowing what it was going to be about. I think this is my last slide. This is the Hanners family. Caleb's over here on the right, then Chelsea, and then there are five kids in the middle, and then they have number six on the way. So their kids are Julia, Lydia, Misha, Abram, and Cohen. And so if you guys would just keep the Henners family in your prayers, pray that the Lord would send laborers to them. Their biggest, um, their biggest need is for people to come to the ranch on the weekends and help them. Pray for the Lord to um, raise up people to support them financially. And then also just pray that our church can continue this partnership with them, continue sending people. Um, I think our church and Victory Ranch are a great partnership. Mm -hmm. So that's all I have. So I was gonna have Larry come up and share. And then is Dalton Holcher up here? I was going to have him come up and share. I didn't see him this morning. He is here. Hey, over there. Here, Dalton. Thank you. Well, he kind of stole a little of my thunder. I was going to mention Holly. Uh, I had a meal with her, and that's one mixed up young lady. And uh, to see what the hinders do for the her is amazing. And uh, we had a good time. I was proud of everybody that was there. I, uh, I thought the boys were going to goof off more than they did, but they actually got to it. <laughs> they really got to it. As a matter of fact, uh, I, was, I was proud of them. Uh, when we told them to do something, there was no back talk or anything. They just, yep. And so I guess they only had to put up with us for three days, so it was no big deal. But uh, it's, you know that when you go when those kids come to the young people come to that ranch they're going to hear the word and uh, some of them evidently have never heard the real word they've heard a lot of crap in their life and uh, it was neat to see that and uh, from a military ex-military person boy I wish they had something like that when I was there but uh, they didn't but that's what we live and learn so Glad to see that that place is there. Okay, so at Victory Ranch, we did, uh, we uh, remodeled a trailer home, and it was great to see how all of us together, what we did in only three days, we remodeled the whole thing. And when the soldiers came, like, uh, it, was, it was said uh, that they haven't had real food in a while. And I actually heard one of them say, her name, it was Holly. She sat down with her food and said, guys, look, real food. And so that was pretty cool to hear. I wasn't there when they got taught the gospel and stuff because it's only the women. But talking about it afterwards was a great experience for me. I don't think it just, I think for me to be able to go, it was a great experience and I'm glad I did. And I hope to do it again soon. All right, friends, and God is calling us not to be members, but to be missionaries. And sometimes the mission field is across the seas or across the nation, and many, many, many times it's across the street. God's calling us to join him. We're going to pray for Victory Ranch, and we've got some other people that are in your bulletin to pray for, kids going to camp and whatnot. Let's turn our hearts to the Lord in prayer. Please pray with me. Lord, your word says you've called us to pray. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, as much as your will is carried out and executed to the last and finest of details in heaven, Lord, let your will be carried out to the last and finest of details here on earth. And Lord, as, as, as many, as much as the people in heaven and all the who gather around you bend their knee before you, Jesus, we pray that one day every knee will, that every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, for all those who go to Victory Ranch, all of the men and women who serve in armed forces, Lord, our neighbors, our friends, our co-workers, our classmates, Lord, our, uh, our friends that we speak to at, at Hardee's and the coffee in the morning, Lord, the folks we see just passing down, down the road, we pray that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And Lord, to that end, make us missionaries. Give us boldness to proclaim the good news of the gospel to friends and, and, and uh, family alike. Give us boldness to share the truth of your word, Lord, because there's wisdom in that truth. And Lord, boldness to ask, can I pray 
for you and cause us, Lord, to unite around you and your mission, Lord, for the world in which we live. Sovereign God, we lay up before your throne today, I mean, just our thanksgiving for the, the team to be able to go to Victory Ranch, the work that they were able to accomplish that will help propagate the gospel, Lord, as teams come and serve and missionaries come and serve as, Lord, military men and women come to be ministered to. All that they've done to make that happen, we bless and give you thanks. And for the, our partnership, Lord, with the Henders to continue, we pray for that too. And that we could continue to send teams, Lord, to South Carolina and that we wouldn't hold back and give ourselves away to you towards your kingdom's ends and goals. God, today we, uh, we lay up before you a few things. There's a team of people who tonight are going to canvas a, a neighborhood. And tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday, we're going to be putting on a little neighborhood Bible school. And Jesus, we pray that you'll touch the hearts of those kids today with the gospel. See, you're moving us, Lord, already. You're moving us to be missionaries right here in Sheldon and the surrounding countryside, north, 10 miles north, south, east, and west. You're moving us. And Jesus, we pray that you'll turn hearts of children and parents to you. God, we've got kids going to camp at Inspiration Hills. And bless these young men who are going. May they know you, love you, serve you more, Lord, as they encounter you and your truth, Lord, at camp this week and have a lot of fun at the same time. Bless these kids, Lord. Open their hearts to you. For our brother Gene, we pray, Jesus, that you would bring healing to him. For, uh, for, for Braxton, Lord, who's had an injury this past week and couldn't come to see Grandma and Grandpa, Jesus, we pray that you will help heal him. For our sister Jan Pennings, Lord, who's been in the hospital and thankfully come home. Jesus, we pray that you would restore to her good health and ability once again. For our brother Jim, for the problems he's been having with his foot. Jesus, would you stretch your hand out and heal him, we pray. Thank you, Lord. And we pray for Brittany and Kayla, Lord. And I, we're just grateful to be able to be part of what you are doing up at the lakes this summer. And help us to join them and encourage them, Lord and our, uh, our giving and our support as well. We love you, Lord. And together we pray as you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we're going to bring our offering to the king. And when we do, our bags are our regular offering. The plates are our, uh, the sportsman's banquet offering. You can give in the bags right now. You can give in the plates. But you can also give online. Just go to the give tab of the website. Or you can text right now, SFRC to 77977. However we give, we give to participate in God's kingdom work and building his kingdom one life at a time.
Uh, kids, if you're four years old or in kindergarten, Mrs. Brenda wants to take you to the back, and she's going to take you to room 21 in the basement. And parents, you can pick your kids up there after worship. Uh, we send them there to children to worship, so they have like a, a special time, a kid-friendly, fun little message for them while the rest of us dive deeply into God's Word. All right. Thank you, kids. So if um, raise your hand now, okay? Let's just be honest. Raise your hand. Who has Snapchat on your phone? Raise your hand. Raise it really high, really high so everybody can see. Only that many? Seriously. Now, raise your hand if you're at, wondering, what in the world is Snapchat? Oh, about equally as many. All right. Just about equally as many of folks are Snapchat. Now, Snapchat is a little app that you can get on your phone. And it allows you to send a video, a picture, uh, but it only lasts for like 10 seconds. So if, if I took a picture, now I don't carry a cell phone. Um, if you ever really need to get a hold of me, you can call me at church or you can call me at home and I'm pretty readily available. Yeah, and the reason I do that is because when I'm with you, I want to be with you. I don't want my phone buzz, buzzing, beeping, and distracting, all that sort of stuff. But if I had a cell phone and I took a picture of myself, click, click, I would Snapchat it to Wendy and it would come up on her phone and she could see my picture. But after like 10 seconds, it would disappear. And it would be entirely gone. Now, kids love to do this. There's a lot of other things you can do with Snapchat. You can give yourself funny faces. You know, perhaps you have seen you know, teenagers with their grandparents taking pictures. You know, when grandma's, you know, got little bunny ears and a little bunny nose or something like that. You've seen those, right? You've probably seen on Facebook. That's what it comes from. It comes from Snapchat. But once it's sent, it's gone. And it, and it doesn't exist anymore. And I was thinking about that this past week. When it comes to, like, unity, I want to talk about this this morning, when it comes to this idea of unity, it is one of those things that exists conceptually in our minds, but sometimes it's like Snapchat. We experience it for a time and then it's gone. And a little bit of that is just the nature of people. But we see that showing up here in the scriptures as God commands his people to worship. I want you to turn with me to, to um, Psalm 133, and we're going to explore this for just a little bit this morning as we you know, take a dive into the Psalms for our summertime series. Psalm 133. We get a, there's, there's a sense of, of unity that the people of God have in this Psalm, but it, it comes and it goes as they gather together. Now, if, okay, here's the little Snapchat logo. So if you see this on your kid's phone, you got on your phone, you know what it looks like. It's this little ghost thing because it kind of comes and goes. It's not always there. It's not always... Uh, uh, present there. Now, when we read Psalm 133 uh, this morning, we need to know that this is, this is all these psalms, from, you know, from the first one to the last one. They were at one time sung, and there, were, uh, there, were mu there was music to go to these psalms, and the people sung them. Now, what's particularly interesting and helpful for us in our understanding of the scriptures today is that Psalm 133 was what was called a psalm of ascent. Or, or, or just a song of ascent. So let me give you the picture. Psalm 120 through 134 were songs that were sung for a particular occasion. Now we sing songs for particular occasions, don't we? All right. One particular occasion is if it's your birthday, what do you sing? Happy birthday. The people of Israel had a songs they sung for a particular occasion. And they're called the songs of ascent for a reason. Because as they're traveling, 
to Jerusalem at the command of the Lord. There were three festivals, the festival of booths, tab or tabernacles, uh, in-gathering, and uh, the fe feast of, uh, of uh, what do they call it, stuff you put in bread that makes it rise. Unleavened. unleavened, yeah, unleavened bread. Thank you. Sometimes you can't remember stuff. There's three feasts, and God commanded his people to you know, go to the feast. So three times a year, everybody would go to Jerusalem. But they're called the Psalms of Ascent because to get to Jerusalem, you had to go uphill. Jerusalem sits at about 2,900 or so feet. If they were coming from the east from Jericho, they started at negative 1,194 feet. Now you do the math, they're climbing over 4,000 feet. And they're singing these songs. So as they're climbing up to Jerusalem, they're singing these songs. And Psalm 133 was one of the songs that they sung when everybody's getting together. It's like one great, huge family reunion. Let's listen. Let's turn our hearts to the Lord's Word. Verse 1. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. Okay, that's that, the key phrase is when brothers live together in unity. We're going to unpack that in a little bit. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. It is like the precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the collar of his robes. It is as if, it is as if the dew of Hermon were following on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Brad, please pray us in. Will you pray with me? Lord in heaven, we thank you for bringing each one of us here this morning. Lord, we're here to worship you, to bring yeah. glory to your name. And Lord, we ask that you would remove any distractions from our minds at this time so mm -hmm. that we may correctly hear and understand your word. Uh, speak to us now through Pastor Paul. Pour out your spirit upon him and on each one of us. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So here's what happens. When God's people gather... And live together in unity, God makes life happen. The Lord makes life happen. Let's unpack this scripture text together. Let's look at verse 1. How good and pleasant it is. There's not really much to understand there because we're talking about something that's good, it's pleasant, it's awesome, it's, it's fun to experience. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. Let's unpack that, because if we don't understand that, we're not going to be able to understand the other two verses of this psalm. Now, it's a song, it's really short, probably easy to remember, but packed full of important truth for us. When brothers live together in unity. Now, when it says brothers, who are we talking about there? Well, it's not just talking about men. There would be women in the procession. Uh, and, and they're all together, coming from all over, all the roads, you know, coming into Jerusalem from the east, the north, the south, and the west, they're all the people of Israel. All of God's people, they're all making this ascent into Jerusalem. And from whichever way you go, you're climbing uphill. That's who we're talking about. All the people, all of God's people, when it says, when it says brothers, when they live. What's that word mean? Well, we, we have a, hench, a hunch of what that means, but let me give you a little deeper understanding. The idea is here that they, they dwell together. The idea here is that they're sitting down together. And it's the very same things that they would do when they actually go and participate in one of these feasts. They sit down together and you know, have a common meal. We're talking a lot, a lot of people now. But they also have to dwell together and they kind of pack it all in. These feasts can last for like seven days. It's a long time. And so you've got, you know, you and your brother, and you and your brother, you and your brother, and their brother, and their brother, and their neighbors, all coming together into this place at this one time, and they're sitting down together to eat, they're, they're feasting together, but they're also living next to each other for those seven days. So when it says live, I want us to have a picture in our mind of thousands of people gathering and descending upon Jerusalem for that one place in that one time to celebrate, to worship, to honor the Lord there. That's a lot of people. Think of your family a second. How many hotel rooms would you need to have you know, your immediate, immediate family, your brothers and sisters, okay? your mom and dad, but then their brothers and sisters, then your cousins, and if you're going to go one more generation, your second cousins, it adds up pretty quickly. Now, put that picture in your mind. Okay, Brad and Janice are laughing because you got a ton of cousins, I know. That's a lot of people. 
And they're living there together for those seven days. They come together, and after the seven days, they depart. And then it says they live together in unity. There's this sense of, you know, stand up with me a second, Wendy. This is what you get to be, you know, when you're the uh, secretary at the church. There's this sense of being arm in arm together, together, you, you know, united. We're not just living next to each other. We're not just sitting down. But there's a sense, you know what, we're in this together. Turn to your husband, turn to your wife, if they're sitting there next to you. All right? Look at them a second. Go ahead. Tell them we're in this together. All right. Okay, thank you, Wendy. That's sort of the sense of this word. There's sort of this being united together. Now, husbands and wives, there's a little better, a special being united together. But this is the idea. And if we have this, you know, this understood, we can unpack the rest of it. So we've got all these people coming to Jerusalem. It's good and pleasant. Man, it's a great time. How good and pleasant when brothers live together in unity. They're all going up to Jerusalem, all sitting down together. All right, this is hugely important for us to dive in to what the Lord wants us to understand. Because in this, look at the, look at the last phrase here, or, or last sentence, Psalm 133. For there, okay, the there refers to the it in verse, the, the beginning of verse 3, and the it at the beginning of verse 2, and the it that is uh, towards the beginning of verse 1. And what's the it? The it is living together. Where are they? That's where they're at is Mount Zion. The gathering together. It is good and pleasant. And there God brings life forevermore. All right. So we have unpacked that. Now let's go to verse 2. Verse two, We got two pictures. Little snapshots, we'll call them. A little snapchat. You take a little picture. Here's one picture of what it looks like. Let's, let's break it down. It's like precious oil poured on the head. Now, immediately when you hear precious oil poured onto the head, you need to think of Joseph a little bit here and his you know, ladder ascending to heaven. He, he didn't pour any oil on a head, but he poured oil on a rock. There's a sim- symbolism to that. There's sort of a, this is set apart for God. But it's pointing us back to another occasion that God set apart, not a place, but a person. Look, keep looking on. Oil poured on the head, running down on the beard. Whose beard? Running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the collar of his robes. Aaron, well, Aaron is the, like the first priest of Israel. If you know your Old Testament history, uh, the Lord brought the people of Israel out from Egypt. You know, Moses was their leader. Aaron was Moses' brother. Aaron was set apart. He and his descendants after him set apart as priests. And that Part of the ceremony of setting them apart was this pouring of oil on their heads. And I mean, it was a, a very liberal pouring of oil, ran down their beards, on their collars, but it symbolized being set apart. And they would do specific duties within the temple to help lead the worship of the people of God. Part of that duty, well, most of that duty, was to bring the sacrifices that keep, helped, helped keep people in right relationship with God. And they had to keep doing this. Because they were continually sinning. So they always kept bringing sacrifices of animals. Bulls, goats, rams, birds if you were poor, grain. There's all sorts of sacrifices. And he, the Aaron, and his descendants were the ones who were making that happen. Okay? There's a little bit of symbolism here. Okay? In this, because Aaron and his family are doing this thing, but if we're all sacrificing and he's the one who's doing it, we're equally sinners. Okay? And, and, and equally you're atoned by those sacrifices of the people as Aaron and his descendants bring them. But there's also a little bit of symbolism here too. That we're set apart. The people of Israel, they're set apart as God's people. They are not just any old regular people. They're the Lord's people. And there's something really special about that. That's, that's, that's verse 2. That's verse, and then we get another picture. This is another Snapchat. In, in verse 3, this, this picture is, you know, it's as if, okay, when the brothers living together in unity, it's like this, okay? The dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. Hermon, who's that? Who's that? Well, Hermon isn't a person. It's a, it's a mountain. And it's a mountain towards the mostly north and a little east of Jerusalem. And Mount Hermon, most years, is continually snow-capped. It stands, let's see, I wrote my notes here. It stands at 9,232 feet. That's pretty high. Did you know that? 
And the water melting off the snow in Mount Hermon continually feeds the Jordan River that flows you know, near and around Jerusalem. But during the summer months, it's so cool up there, and there's so much moisture coming off of the Mediterranean Sea that the dew on top of the mountain is very, very thick. And it's a very lush place because there's plenty of dew, even when you know, there isn't any rain. We all know, just because of where we live, that if you don't have rain, you don't have life. You don't have grain. You don't have plants. Now, sometimes, like this past week, well, the Lord can provide more than what we need. But if we don't have it, we certainly aren't going to have anything. And, and it's a source, it's a picture of life. That dew is like life. Without it, there is no life. And it's as though this life is falling down on Mount Zion. When, when brothers, when you know, the whole tribe, the whole clan is together, it's like dew falling down. It brings life. And in fact, that's what we get there. For there, Mount Zion where the people are unified because they're all coming together. Even there, God bestows His blessing, even life evermore. So now, the big question that we have to ask is this. What in the world does this mean? Anybody asking that question? What in the world? I've got one person, one kid, who's paying attention in the front row who's asking the question. Let me give you a high five because there's about 300 adults here who did not raise their hand. Because either they're not paying attention, or they're just too ashamed to raise their hand. We're all asking the question, what does this mean for us and for our lives? Let me give you a couple of things. Let's put this first truth note up on the, on the screen. When God's people gather together and live together in unity, He brings life. Now I'm going to say it. It's like a Snapchat. It happens for a moment, and then it's gone. Three times a year, they come together, and then it's gone. There's, I, I always know it in principle, I always know it in principle, but some, there are appointed times when everybody gets together. And then it's gone. When, but when it happens, okay, the Lord brings life. The Lord brings life. And when the people of Israel gathered together, it was a reminder of who they were. Because they were, they were gathering together. Why? Because they're God's people. And they're responding to the call of God to bring their worship, bring their sacrifice, bring their praise. It's a reminder now, what we need to be reminded of is the other thing that many centuries later would happen in Jerusalem. Anybody know what would happen in Jerusalem centuries later? Molly, do you know? The disciples went to Jerusalem. What happened to Jesus in Jerusalem? He died. He died for our sins, absolutely. And, and so when the people of Israel bringing all of these sacrifices year after year after year after year, finally Jesus brings it to an end. Sometimes he's called the great high priest because not only does he bring a sacrifice, he is the sacrifice. He is the great high priest and he brings it all to an end. Friends, we ought to be reminded in this scripture text of whose we are. Not who we are, but whose we are. So whenever we gather together Sunday mornings or throughout the year with you know, other brothers and sisters, we remember whose we are. We are remembered that without Jesus, we're just lost and lonely sinners. We have no hope in this world. And we like to think about Jesus we have hope, but we don't have any hope. We need to remember that it's only by Jesus' blood that our, our sins are atoned for. It's only by His resurrection from the grave that we are brought to life and have eternal life. It is only we who are set apart as God's people. It's a reminder of whose we are. And, and from that then, a reminder then of this, we're not alone. A story I received from... Uh, up at the lakes this past week of, uh, of, uh, from uh, Brittany and, um, and Kayla was, was a, a little story that went kind of like this. I, I told you earlier, there's like 500 kids who come, you know, college-age kids who come to work from all sorts of nations, Jamaica, Eastern Europe, China. And there was one uh, Chinese young woman um, who was there and just feeling awfully lonely. And wouldn't you too? I mean, you're away from your family, you're away from your, your culture, you're away from what's home. 
you're away from people who speak Chinese and you have to speak English. All that's a little rough. Here's what happened. You know, Kayla and, and, and Brittany are bringing all these kids together, and, and this young Chinese woman came, and, 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 and then another one came. And, and, and the first one went to the second one and said, are you Chinese? Yeah, I'm Chinese. Where do you live? And they just made this connection, and the two found out that they were both Christians. Now, this is important because most people in China are not Christians. A lot of times in China, you can be persecuted if you're, not a, if you're a Christian. And lo and behold, here are the two of them. In our little corner of Iowa, met together. And you know how much encouragement came? How much blessing came one to the other because they knew they were in this together? We realize when we gather together that we are not alone. And when we gather together, friends, we encourage one another. Think of it now. If you saw all the masses of people riding up the slopes into Jerusalem, or walking up the slopes, as they're rising, you realize, I'm not alone and we're in this together. We're coming to worship the Lord. Same way, when you come to worship on Sunday morning, when you see the cars lined up, you're thinking to yourself, man, I'm so glad that I'm here. Look at all the people who else have come. I'm so glad that I came. When people gather together, you encourage one another. You know, if you were driving by Rise Fest last Friday night, Saturday night, and you saw the mass of cars, you'd be like, what am I missing out on? Because when people gather, there's an encouragement to the other people say, hey, you got to be here too. Come on. And when God's people gather, there's life there. Here's the thing. It happens, and then it goes away. And it happens again, but then it goes away. But in principle, we're all together united as one. doesn't matter if we've historically come to the first service, the second service. It doesn't matter if we belong to First Reformed Church or the Lutheran Church. It doesn't matter if we belong you know, to, uh, you know, to the churches in Sheldon or in Sanborn. It doesn't matter. We become united together. And I've seen this happen all over. All over. When, when I've, I've been on the Words of Hope board you know, for the last three years, and there's this great sense of unity when, when all the brothers and sisters come and share about what God's doing and throughout their nations. There's a sense of, wow, we get to be in this together. It's a great thing. It's a great thing. Just like the two young Chinese women who uh, were up at the lakes. It was encouragement to keep on keeping on. So let's put this word to practice in our lives. Shall we do that? Let's do it. All right. Here's the first thing I want you to take home today. Point of application. I don't want you to get together with other Christians. I don't know what I've said for other Christians. You're going to get together with other Christians, all right? And not just for socialness or fun, but to grow in the knowledge of Jesus. Get together. Get together and don't neglect it. The scriptures say, do not neglect your meeting with one another, but encourage one another. And when you get together, you encourage one another. Some of you are in a small group, and I just applaud that because that helps us grow. And there's some social stuff, and there's some fun stuff, and that needs to be a part of life together. But the whole point is to grow together. Some of you may not be in a small group. You're thinking, I'd like to be in a small group. And if you would really like to be in a small group, you know where it says prayer request? Just kind of scratch that out and say, I want to be in a small group. I need some people around me. Get together with other believers. Sometimes they're waiting for you to, do, you know, to call them together. Sometimes you're waiting for them. We'll just do it and get together. You've got to get together, all right? Here's the second thing. Don't look down, but help one another up. The tendency for us is to look down on other believers. Well, they're not as good as me. Well, he needs to grow a little. Well, what's, why is she doing that? I don't want you to do that. Because when those people of Israel were coming, they were all equal. Equally sinners before the eyes of God. Equally atoned for by those sacrifices and equally set apart. And all of us are in some way, shape, or form growing closer to Jesus. But none of us have ever arrived, right? None of us. So don't look down, but lift one another up. Don't look down and say, rah, 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 but say, how can I help my brother? How can I help my sister grow closer to Jesus? Or, you know, maybe they're not even a part of this congregation. Maybe they're a part of another congregation, a CRC church or Parkview. Let's not do that. 
Let's help build one another up. And, and that is, I'm, I'm just be honest, that is the attitude of all of the pastors who belong to the ministerial association in town. It's not about competition. It's not about putting one another down. It's like, let's work together and let's help one another. Because as our culture changes around us, we realize, wow, we really need one another, don't we? Don't look down, but help one another up. Here's the second, or last thing. Encourage one another. When you don't come to worship, you're not encouraging the person who sits next to you. You're not encouraging them. You're not helping one another. Come. Well, you just kind of say, well, I want to go fishing. Well, I want to go up to the lake. Well, I'm going to be frank and honest right now with you. And I'm going to speak directly to parents of young kids. Okay? Now, grandparents, you're not, you're, you're not out of this, but you don't have the day-to-day you know, influence upon your kids. Parents, when we don't make worship a priority, your kids won't learn it either. And 20 years from now, 30 years from now, you'll be coming back to me and asking me, why aren't my grandkids going to worship? Because you didn't teach your kids. This is important. And I remember when I was a kid crabbing to my mom and dad, what do we got to go to church for? It's boring. Oh, we didn't have children in worship back in those days. Anybody else do that to your parents? Okay, a few, a few brave souls. We didn't have children in worship. You know, my dad gave me the bulletin. He'd say, circle all the bees. And so I'd circle all the bees. <laughs> and then he'd say, circle all the O's. You know, they check. That was worship for me for like the first 10 years of my life. But I'm going to tell you right now, am I glad my mom and dad drugged me by the hand and drove me to worship? You bet I am. You bet I am. And, and even if we're older, you encourage those who are younger to be here too. And when you're younger, you encourage the older ones too. Friends, it, it comes down to it. We need each other. Now picture in your mind, the whole mass of the people of Israel gathering you know, to Jerusalem. They're encouraging one another. This is important. We're both responding to the call of God to you know, worship Him. We do the same thing. Don't neglect worship. Encourage one another by coming to worship. You know, in this time this summer, you know, it's, it, it could be a tumultuous time. Some of us like you know, the music. Some of us do. Some of us like this. Some of... It's not about our personal preferences. It's about the Lord. It's about bringing to Him our praise and glory. And when we come, we encourage those sitting next to us to come as well. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray. Lord Jesus, come and let your life-giving presence be poured forth, Lord, in us. And as we continue to sing, Lord, let our hearts be joined together and together, Lord, in praise and honor and glory to you. We love you. We lift our hearts to you. Jesus, in your name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Hey, friends, let's stand and sing. And if we sing, we're going to close our time together. Let's lift our hearts to the King. Great is thy faithfulness, morning.